magic bricks. So it says here, it is difficult to identify with certainty who was buried within this um, unused tomb that was not intended for anyone of the Amana royal family. That's what they're guessing there. This is deep, eh? Please follow me. We just begin. Initially, the skeletal remains, CG61075, found inside this coffin, were identified as those of Queen Tai, whose name could be found on several objects found within KV55, including the large gilded shrine. However, this identification was soon discredited. You see what's going on here? However, this identification was soon discredited. With a second examination by Elliot Smith, showed that the, that the remains were those of a young man who died in his early 20s. During the 1960s, Ronald Harrison proposed a kinship relationship between the KV-55 skeleton and the mummy of Tutankhamun, based off of similar anthropological features. Okay. In 20... 2010, Zai Hawass and a team of experts re-examined the remains and concluded that they were of a male who died between the ages of 35 and 45 years old. The DNA result of the examination suggests that the KV-55 skeleton was the son of Amenhotep III and the father to Tutankhamun. Hearing this now, making either Akhenaten or Semenkare as the likely candidates for the identification of the individual buried within the coffin. All right. Now, you can see for yourself, that is why I went through that with you, before we even go inside here now, you could see for yourself that archaeologists are like, wow, like who's really in this? Is it Tia or Queen T? Is it Kia? Is it uh, even some say Tuya? Is it Akhenaten? Is it Tutankhamun? Is it somebody else there on the list? But eventually, as you could see, up-to-date science, because it, it's not Akhenaten, we all know that for sure. And his burial place, although his uh, remains have never been found, is in, is in the wadi, away from the small Aken temple, which is aligned with a, a very clean hierophony, which we will show you next program. So when you go inside now, when you entered into the tomb of Semenkare, at least when they first went into it, before they removed what they found, his coffer and everything was just smashed on the ground. It was just thrown to the side. Now, yes, in the tomb of Tutankhamun, we mentioned that things were just thrown about, all the golden statues and all the rubies and the diamonds they were all about some things were not in order at all but at least his burial chambers that's to command that was pristine and that was in order and that was well placed but this mummy the casket or uh, sarcophagus that he was in was just thrown on the ground the whole room was dreary was was dark you know you didn't get the gleaming glitter nothing nothing even nearly close to what you got when you went into the tomb of tutankhamun as i said in the previous lecture that we did the truth about tutankhamun and akhenaten that's the name of the lecture go and check it out the truth about akhenaten and tutankhamun as we we showed you that there's no other individual who has ever been dug up anywhere with the level of riches like that of Tutankhamun, never. 
Well, to be honest, amongst the Egyptian kings and pharaohs, I don't think there has ever been any that has been found in a tomb that looks so dreary, so empty, so mash up, everything on the ground, everything broken up, things thrown in the corner, nothing here saying too much of no gold, just a little bit of this and a little touch here and you'll see where the touch is. But it was just empty, it was just discarded. This person that was just thrown on the ground. And remember the tomb was well sealed. This is the tomb with the double seal. This was the tomb with the double seal, which makes ones now speculate that the person in this tomb was not only, you know, discarded and just thrown aside, but he was never to escape. He was not supposed to come out. He was not to resurrect. We don't have no, nothing on the wall showing you him resurrecting and going in the bosom of Horus or going in the bosom of, 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 of Osiris or none of that kind of stuff. He just there on the ground. This must be some old servant somewhere, brother. He looked like the, the garbage sweeper. Yeah, the way that he was just thrown in here. This cannot be nobody of no status. Not in KV 55. So if you look here, family, from what I just read now, this here is like the panels, some of the side panels of the casket itself, the box that he would have been in. Those were just on the ground. And if you look good here, this is a, a glyph and her name there, which is um, Queen T or Queen Tai as some pronounce her. She is the mother of Akhenaten. And this is an individual paying homage to the Aten, which would give the impression many, uh, much so of that of Akhenaten. And that's who it is. Because this is now, this is a drawing of what I'm just showing you here. See it here? You see Queen T here. She has on the, 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 the sun disk and the feathers of her moon. That's her. And she's standing behind the figure here. Akhenaten, but Akhenaten is scratched out. And you see that he has on the scarf that I showed you about previous week. And his name, his name is scratched out. Now one could guess that it's Simenkare as well, you know. But as I said, there's certain identification that would say it is Akhenaten. Now he looks like a bubble there, but they scratch out all of this, his name and everything. So that's Queen T here which would have been his mother, who was also his, was also, also his co-regent for, for a while, especially in the early days. And Secretary of State, that is Queen Tai, she's right behind of him also taking of the glory of the life, the key of life, the ankh. And this is on, this is on the panel of the tomb, the, 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 the sarcophagus itself was inside of this box, this paneled box, and this was what was on the panel. And you could see it here. And there you see Queen T again with the very same um, headdress. You see it here, the headdress, the plume, feathers, and the symbol of Amun. And of course, you see the horns of Hathor as well. All right. Now, so this is the actual um, casket that the, the, the body of Semenkare was in. And if you notice, with this expression, this is where his name would have been. So his name was etched out of this area as well. So he was gone from here. So the identity, identity of the mommy or the cat inside of this casket was not known or if you want to call it a, again a sarcophagus. This also was the, the expression. It's not exactly a mask, you know, all of this is a part of the coffer or the sarcophagus, but it had a golden mask over it. And the golden mask was ripped off, just leaving the right eye. Now, now, now you may say, oh, who would have done all of this to him? If you notice, he has locks as well. Who would have done all of this to him and he was a king? He has the Uraeus, he has the he has the serpent on his head. 
may not be the feathered snake, but who would have done this to him? What would he have done that they would have desecrated his tomb or at least buried him in such a way? Because again, you know, we're not saying somebody desecrated his tomb. We, was, we are saying, just like Tutankhamun was buried in that way and everything thrown inside, it's not because they were in a hurry. Everything has its scientific reasoning. These are the esoteric gods in a man. They know how to express themselves in the deepest of science and leave it for you to figure out. This is like Batman and Robin. Yeah, check it. The Riddler, the Joker, they always have to figure things out, figure things out. Holy smokes, Batman. Holy smokes. I got some holy smokes right here in my hand. So yeah. So why is this happening? What would he have done? that they have to deal with him in such a dread way. Hmm. All right. So you see they ripped the gold mask off. It must have been thieves. That's why they ripped the gold away because they couldn't find no more gold in the place. So they tried to get as much gold as possible. I mean, if you think that is your, if that is your assessment, everyone is free to have their outlook on it. But I honestly believe that everything here was done purposely just the way it was done why because i have enough evidence of us operating like that even prior i just began with an example here of people's name being left out people's name being removed from lists and those of us who figure that out say wow they must have done something wrong <laughs> not knowing that they have done everything right. And that is why they're, they're not counted amongst men. Straight up. So our science is very deep. We don't, we don't, our thing is not a linear thing, not just straight line point A to point B. We have levels to our understanding. But you see, remember we grew up with European history, or not history, but European education, the system of education, wherever you are. You could have been in, in Africa or in the Caribbean. It doesn't matter where you are. I am positive. You went to school, even if you went to school under a tree, which would be good, but more than likely went to school in one of them square places where you sit in your own little cubicle and you sit behind one another and arms length and all of that that is training that training you to be industrial that was set up by rockefeller and his family so you could make more bread the whole world could make more bread for them and the little few in their club that's real so the mind the mind is thinking very linear because we were taught linear stuff we don't even go on the next dimension we don't even go to the parallel worlds much less to see the different levels of understanding of what is taking place here. This is a deep, deep expression of science that's going on here. All right. So yeah, for sure, you could see the individual, his mask was torn off. So why was this? This now, some say that this was the face of Queen uh, T, but yet still the canopy jar had on um, the name which represents um, um, Kia. Remember, Kia was also mentioned as well. So, so this is some serious stuff. We know that it's Samenkare, but his name is scratched out. His name is nowhere. But yet still, we still see the presence of Tia. We see the presence of Kia. We also see Akhenaten, because his name was still on the magic bricks. We see Tut Ankaman as we enter into the doors. This is a very serious vibration. All of this taking place. And even Tuya as well is mentioned in one of the reliefs that were found. So all of these people, remember the casket was said to originally have been made for a woman, but somehow a man ended up in it. Even some would try to identify this as a woman with a beard similar to how Hatshepsut would have represented herself. Now, this is some serious vibration, family. What kind of king is this that he would have been 
given such a burial and given such a treatment isn't he the individual that ruled between Akhenaten and Tutankhamun and at the same time even though Tutankhamun now remember he went out as as the most glorious of them all but yet still this individual went out somewhat as the most neglected of them all and again interesting eh? when you leave Semenkere too and walk in a specific access you walk right into Tutankhamun's tomb and here where lies the science that we will definitely be going into yes family give me thanks for your presence eh? And soon the storm will definitely be over. Blessed love, you know, just listening to or just taking in one of our, you know, DVD documentaries, online lecture presentation. And that was, or that was a bit of the Samenkari. In fact, remember the Samenkari, that's just the second part of a three-part series talking about the living gods of Kemen. And as I said, that is the Semenkare edition. And I'm uh, just giving you a strength on that as we listen. Let's just take in a bit more. And we just family. halfway through, if we reach again. that far as yet. I hope you have all your snacks there. You yeah, got the snack down and keep burning the fire because we're going higher and higher. So remember, next strong lecture is a contribution lecture. You understand? So just like there's no admission, but you can pay a contribution. And this is the interesting thing. This is for the whole world to see. So even if you don't pay no contribution, you're still going to see it. But again, those of you who value what is being expressed, as I said, you could utilize the cash app. Now, this is for Next Strong's lecture, not this lecture. This is Next Strong's lecture we're talking about, Ramesu. Mm -hmm. You could use the like, utilize the cash app, which is Priest Isaac uh, 27, very same as the email. Yes, family, that's the second part of a three-part series that we did entitled The Living Gods of Kemet. And of course, you could definitely get a copy of The Living Gods of Kemet, part one, part two, and part three. You can go straight to our shop right here on the Precise Institute of Holistic Knowledge website as you are seeing it live and direct there and there you see the video Semenkare. that is exactly what we are looking at at the moment obviously you will not get all of it but this was an online lecture that we did some time ago and it is just one of a three-part series three beautiful online lectures that we did here we have the living gods of kemet part one this is the the truth about Tutankhamun and Akhenaten, very beautiful. And then, of course, part two, which again is what we are taking in, Semenkare. And really, what Semenkare, the moral of the story is that Semenkare is the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. Now, right here on our YouTube channel some years ago, we did a presentation, Semenkare, and you can still find it on the YouTube channel if you search diligently for it. But of course, our, our online lecture was, um, let's just say, we added a different level to it and, and took it on a deeper realm. So for sure, we're giving you a bit of that as we speak right now. And don't worry, we will be returning to that in a moment but of course remember you know you can order the full 
online lecture for yourself. So you could have it in your own archive so you can preserve it for yourself. All you have to do is visit our website. Remember the link is in the description of this video. You just scroll down the video and you will find the link in the description of the video. And definitely, you will definitely, um, will, will, will just go straight to the shop region and then you will be able to, to order any one of the, the video documentaries that we have here available for you. So again, it's a three part series family. And I'm talking about the living gods of Kemet, part one. And again, that is the Tutankhamun and Akhenaten. And part two, of course, will be Semenkare. And, and that is what we are taking it at the moment. And part three is Ramesu. Yes, Ramesu the second. Yes, definitely you would like to get to make sure you have a copy of Ramesu for your very own. And as I said, you can definitely visit the shop and there are many, many other things that will be in store for you. Of course, you can even check from our merchandise and, and uh, even our shirts and, and these different things, our videos, et cetera, uh, available for you. I, def I definitely would like to invite each and everyone again to the Tiger's Nest this evening. Um, the Tiger's Nest for sure, you know, remember that is a 7 p.m. sharp. We're going to have a, a special um, Tiger's Nest program, uh, well, tomorrow evening, but tonight as well. You know, for sure, I'm sure everyone knows Wesley Muhammad. And, and of course, Wesley Muhammad is a, a, an individual that is a member of the nation of Islam, you know, and as a member of the nation of Islam, you know, specifically, he, he, he has a whole reasoning as it deals with the cannabis, what is known as the weaponized weed, you know. So the weaponized weed is something that we will be getting into this evening. We'll be hearing a bit of what Wesley Muhammad has to say on the subject area. So for sure, we'll be getting into that that this evening. But for sure, as it relates to um, tomorrow evening, we'll be having a wonderful program, you know, right here in the Tiger's Nest. You know, we're going to have one Kemet Shockley. Kemet Shockley is a uh, Kemet Shockley is a, a doctor, and he will be. Of course, many of you would have seen him on the what is known as the uh, Hidden Colors. The Hidden Hidden Colors documentary. So the Hidden Colors documentary is a uh, the Hidden Colors documentary is definitely something that I'm sure many ones would have also seen. So. What I'm saying, Brother Kemet Shockley will be with us. That's tomorrow evening in the Tiger's Nest. And um, th that discussion will be directly dealing with the uh, understanding the cultural war on Black people, specifically understanding the cultural war on Black youth. And trust me, this is going to be something heavy. You ain't going to want to miss this. As I said, that will be 7 p.m. sharp on Radio and New International. That's uh, tomorrow evening, September the 20th, you know? So that'll be live and direct. Myself will be sitting down with the brother, having a wonderful discussion. So just make sure, share the link for Radio and New. The link is in the description below. And make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Now, this is one of the main reasons why you have to subscribe to the Tiger's Nest, because remember the Tiger's Nest is very exclusive. 
you know, only by the grace of the Most High. Sometimes you get a bit of it on the YouTube, but the Tiger's Nest is very exclusive. You understand? So you don't want to miss a program like this. So once you subscribe, very, very inexpensive pennies, uh, you know, for each of these programs, they're literal pennies, especially if you take the, the annual package. Once you subscribe, you don't even have to worry about listening to the Tiger's Nest. The Tiger's Nest will come to you each and every day. You know, via the inbox, you get it via the email part. You'll have it in your inbox. What a wonderful vibes. So, so just contact us. Contact us now. You understand? Right now, email me now. I say, yo, I don't want to miss none of them programs there. Let me just subscribe to the Tiger's Nest radio program. And remember, we have a wonderful initiative out there for anyone who is serious, anyone who is a serious entra entrepreneur. Pardon me. I'm not ashamed if I don't get the word right. It's French, you know. I think it's French or some Portuguese, some kind of word. It means business person, whatever. So entrepreneur, yeah, yeah. But anyway, those who are serious about their economic growth and economic standard and and and, and know they can make an extra 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, depending on your skill, your your techniques, uh, per, a, a week, yeah, even a day. It's up to you, depending on what you want to do. It's up to you. You know, we got to be more serious when it comes to our economic growth in them times. Eh? So definitely, family, as I said before, if you missed it, we have an opportunity for you, depending on how skillful you think you are, where you can make, depending on how much you want to make per week, 100 to $500. And all you have to do is to, to, to get subscribers for the Tiger's Nest radio program. So you bring in four subscribers, just four people. Once you can recommend the Tiger's Nest to four people and they contact me and say, hey, you send them four of them, just four in a week, that alone is $100. Eh? Trust me, I mean, it's not hard. I mean, how much? How many subscribers do you think I bring a week? And you may say, well, please, that's your program. and." You know what I mean? You, this is what you do and whatever the case is. No, no, no. That, I'm not talking about my programming. I'm talking about being an entrepreneur. You understand? This is why we do the program, Mind Your Business, so we can understand that there's not just, we're not supposed to live under a system where you just have one stream of income. Like, this is my job and this is all I do. And if, I, if COVID-22 comes, the job locked down again and then I'm on the breadline. No. You're supposed to have several streams of income. Any opportunity you see open, you know, you may not jump at everything, eh? You have to understand the world you're in, but there are many opportunities that are there right now. Many opportunities. This is not this is an opportunity there. I'm just giving you an opportunity to get an extra hundred dollars a week. How much is your light bill? Hmm? How much is your water bill? How much is your car? You don't think an extra hundred dollars a week or even a month. If you can get one subscriber a week for me, one, just one single, at the end of the month, you get a hundred dollars. I'm sure that can pay some. And if you're if you're serious, I mean you could get one a day. At the end of the week, you got a hundred and fifty dollars. One a day. You wake up in the morning and say, Yeah. I have about 500 people on my email list. I'm going to work on all of these people. And listen, eh, even before you do that, you, know, you don't have to be on your own. You know, you can contact me. Once you let me know this is what you are about, we will furnish you with the, the, the right paraphernalia. You know what I mean? And all the aesthetics you need, whether it's posters, whether it's a sample of the program, demos, previous programs, whatever the case is. So you can, you can let the, the client know that, hey, man, this is something you got to listen to every night. I myself listen to it. I am a subscriber myself. Yeah. So, so that's what we encourage here. Yeah, man. You can say what you want. That's what I am about. You can say what you want. Anybody fighting their mentality, you're a waste of time. You can say what you want. That is what it's all about when it comes to um, breaking out the economical slavery. Where you going? Begging reparations, you know, see one done dead, the other one the dead, the other one that all is here and the other one here dropping up. None of them gonna do nothing for you. I'm telling you. So we have to know what we're dealing with in them time. Just fighting and wasting time and, and bickering amongst ourselves before we stand up for, for liberation of our own people. But anyway, 
Give thanks. As I said, we are looking forward to the interview tomorrow evening and tonight. Tiger's Nest, as I said, looking to hear Wesley Muhammad's outlook on the war, uh, on the youths himself using the cannabis team. Speaking about the war on the youths, and we have some youths fighting back. Remember today, today, 4 p.m., 4 p.m. today, on Radio Anu, 4 p.m. sharp today, Radio Anu, we're talking about Youth University. Bring the youths and come. Honorable Princess Akesha Menin and the Honorable Prince Alamase, live and direct. Youth University, bring the youths and come. Read your hand. Remember the link is in the description below this video. Just go down and press it. 4 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time. Bring the youths and come. This is another all level all again. Yeah. Not a politician. I'm not begging no friend. It's all right. If you don't like what I have to say, it's up to you. But some of us will leave our youth behind too much. Trust me, I think I have the authority to speak on the subject. We don't care about our children. We lie. They tell me nothing, nothing Gusta. We hardly care about ourselves. We don't care not about our Even when it comes to this consciousness and this knowledge and discipline and all of that, we not ready yet. We just talk and talk. But anyway, bring your youth and come. Youth University will be definitely, well, not we. I will be in the studio. That would be the prince and the princess will be sharing vibration for you and the young ones. So yeah, man, give thanks, man. Life, give on the keep of life, as I said, right here. The Tiger's Nest, we're definitely promoting that. And remember, hey, listen, nothing's going on. You know, Remember the 3rd of November is at hand. 3rd of November, the coronation of Menelik II. Oh, what a wonderful day. We will be officially launching on that day. The, the our fourth and brand new uh, DVD video documentary, full length video documentary. This one will be entitled A Petty Man. The Lion of Judah Has to Prevail. A Petty Man. So, so we're going to explain to you exactly how we're going to be doing that. The plan is to have a, a big Zoom showing and everything while we launch it. Petty men. And, and of course, that's the triple headed lion guard. And, and of course, you know, that will be brought to you by the tigers there. So the tigers and the lions coming together for such a joy. And remember, that will be our Patreon's Day. Yeah, our Patreon's Day. Celebrating our annual celebration of Radio Anu. And, and that's just in, in the realms of the 2nd of November, the coronation of Neko Senegas. So it's so many things happening Patreon's Day. That is when we, we give back and, and we come together with yourself and you patronize us more and we give back to you. And that's the, 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 the same time again as we celebrate our, our anniversary here at the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge, specifically our, our, our website and radio. And yeah. So yeah, man, give thanks. Give thanks for your patient listening and attention. This is how we do it here. Eh? And I'm going to continue with you as we continue to take in and watch uh, a bit of uh, the video uh, lecture. Uh, I'm talking about Semenkare. And remember, you could get Semenkare for yourself by visiting the website uh, and ordering. As a God figure, yeah. eh? very important. As a God figure, now when you go through his his tomb, as I said, just looking at his mask alone, nobody tear off nothing here. You can see the difference. You can see the glory. You can see the beauty. You know the mask. This is the mask that was placed on his his head, and that alone is is you know an example of what else was in the tomb. Now, a few things, yes, maybe on this side here. These are the golden chariots on this side. But a lot of things were intact. Things were just piled on one another. 
but a lot of things were intact, all sorts of things in these things, eh? uh, uh, goose and some different things representing the feathered snake. Very deep, deep science, very, very deep science taking place. This chest as well. And all of this is gold. This is a solid gold, eh? thrown on the side, solid gold in the corner, solid gold. And this is just one little room or just a corner in a little room. Beautiful, of course, you remember his golden, um, his golden throne. We highlighted the previous time, of course, the Aten, touching Tutankhamun with his Asa crown. And of course, his empress, very similar, uh, what you call this, the, 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 the plume feathers again, just like the previous empress that we looked at a moment ago. All of this uh, was, was found. The, these items I'm showing you were found in the tomb of Tutankhamun. This is the footstool. Someone was mentioning the footstool previous program, so I just decided to bring it up. This was found under one of his outstanding thrones as well, where he would sit and recline. And these represent the procession of the nine lords. To me, a very, very important um, concept even at this time here. And the procession of the nine lords show you three different types of individuals. Three different types. They're nine people, but they have three different types of individuals that you see here. Once you would have um, once you would have observed the documentary seven, for sure, the documentary seven would have clearly showed you the fullness of what this footstool is all about. I'm not going to try to break it down now, but the documentary seven for sure, that is even on um, our YouTube channel. Um, documentary seven, you could just type in seven, um, Honorable King Emmanuel, and it will show up. It's two parts. And it shows you that these, these nine individuals represent three types of people. These three types of people are the same three types of people that you saw on the mask, eh? the mask of Lord Packer. From previous program, the mask of Lord Packer, remember there were three types of people that you see in the future rendition of the mask. I know everybody is with me. You have the Olmec looking figure, that's the Marcus Garvey figure there, this black figure here. You have the man with the locks and the beard, the King Emmanuel figure here. And you have the man with the beard and no lock specifically. And that represent that holy trinity of the prophet, the priest and king. And even in this, I know people will look at this and say them is different nations. And I mean, as I said, you know, these things are layered. That's my point. These things are layered. We have already decoded this. Uh, can I stay forever on it? You understand? But this is the footstool that took anchor man, the feathered snake, would put his foot upon. So it's very symbolic of reincarnation. It's symbolic of coming again in different times and different cycles. You understand? If you notice, you have four of the Olmec looking figures. People may say these are Sudanese, but the Olmec looking figures for sure, then black figure here. And still you have three of the man with the beard and the long hair, three of them, different time, you know, and the man with the, the, the beard and no locks, you see him at the beginning and you see him at the end. Trust me, this is a very serious, serious science, you know. And even them looking as prisoners with hand behind back and all of that is symbolic, showing you that they, they have definitely been incarnated in this crystallized level that we are on. You know, this is like a crystallized level, you know, the level where even God come on this level where he have to eat and sleep and feel pain so that's what the symbol behind all of this is very 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 deep but anyway this is the footstool of tut ankh aman this is another rendition of it you you see a better look you know see the tree in one here and the one is three is nine of them you know but it's three types of individual all right very good so so showing you all of that just giving you an idea again of what is inside of the tomb of tut ankh aman but now as i said the whole science of the god vibes follow me good now remember one of the things that they were saying about akhenaten is that he has this feminine form and you know hips and breasts and all of these different things now akhenaten is a human being you you have to be able to differentiate between the human people well the human people the human beings and the neter or neteru the gods 
So Osiris, although people argue that Osiris was a king, but as far as we understand, he is a Neter. He is one of the gods there. Um, Horus is one of the gods. The Heru, one of the gods. Um, uh, Pata is one of the gods. They, these are not people. Uh, who else? Amun Ra, Ra. These are gods. These are not people. Tutankhamun is a person. Akhenaten is a human being. Ramesses the second, you may be related to him. These are people. You understand? So what I'm saying, when Akhenaten now fashions himself in that feminine slender form, he's showing you again, as we said previous program, that he has the positive and negative balance, the male and female balance. Now look at Happy. Happy is a god. I don't know if Happy ever walked the earth as a human being. If he did, he had to come as a, well, a human being, someone that you recognize, but the spirit of happy would come as a human being. So happy is seen as both male and female with the breasts. This is a serious science in Kemet. He's the one that controls the, the river Nile. Okay. At the same time now, that's the smite Tawi that even sister Tiffany was telling us about. And then now, when you look into the mystic now, the reef not here, you have this happy again with the breast, the nourishment is just symbolic of the nourishment. You know, the nourisher. I highlighted that even Moses said that in the scripture, just before, you know, the Lord sent them quail when they were arguing about the manna and they wanted flesh to eat. And God said, don't worry, Moses, I'll bring them flesh. And Moses said, what? How are you going to do that? Are you going to give them all the rams of Bashan? And he started to go on and go on, you know. Because even before that, he was, he was feeling the pressure. That's Moses. Eh? And he actually told the Most High, me, am I supposed to bear all these children alone? As if I carried them in my womb for nine months, paraphrasing. And then he went on to say, am I to them a suckling father that I have given them suck upon my breast? That's Moses talking. You know? No, no, suckling father on their breast. That means, you know, that's symbolically speaking, obviously. Because if you had to draw what Moses was saying, you would draw something like this, a man with breasts. Because it's symbolic of his nourishing nature. Here's another comedic deity. This is the Nun, which is a combination of Nu and Naune. A man with the breasts, the, the balance of male and female, really. You understand? So that is what Akhenaten brought to the table, unlike any other king, as a God figure. That's what I'm trying to show you. He's a God figure. So he came, he's one of them gods in flesh. He's a happy or a moon in flesh. That is Akhenaten I'm speaking of as a god figure. So, so all of this mystery and he had frolic disease. This is what I'm telling you, hyenas. Hyenas with the hyena degree. Oh, he had frolic disease. He was sick. He was a sick man, you know. I'm, I'm surprised he had children. So many had that. Yeah, really wrong with that, people. I mean, check the bubble man, the man. Mm. Tut Ankh Aman as well. This symbol is the same thing. This is the bee sting. If you notice, the, the mask itself is in the style of the bee. And the mask being in the style of the bee itself, this is why you have the bee sting at the back. Now, the, 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 the science with this is that the bee sting is something that is given to the female bee, really. The worker bee is the one with the sting. The queen bee, the, the, the drone bee doesn't really have a sting, you know. You don't have to run from the drone bee. You see what I'm saying? So, so the sting of a bee is something that is really for the female bee, you know. It's exclusive then to the female bee. But to anchor man as a man, he's wearing the sting of the bee. Which is another level because the bees are very high, high, high scientific animal to deal with. You know, the, 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 it's known as the tiger of the sky for obvious reasons. And it's also known as the lion of the sky. If you look at the, the bee, the bee is a lion plus a tiger in the sky. And the, the bees are, is like um, um, vessels for angels. You see bees as angels, you see. That's why they were present at the birth of King Lalibela. So... So the, the, the king with the bee sting has the balance of male and female polarity within him. Same thing with Akhenaten. 
has the balance of the male and female polarity. These are this was the era of the gods in the mind, if you want to use the term era. <laughs> this was the period of the gods from Akhenaten, yes, Semenkare, and Tutankhamun. You see that little niche there? That was the gods. That was an explosion of power, you know, coming up to Tutankhamun, really. That's really what it, what it was. This is what I'm showing you here. So again, these are the gods, the netter, and the walls, in the, in the books of the pyramid texts and all of these stuff. But these are the living people, Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, and even Semenkare. Look at him good. That's Semenkare. Semenkare is seen with breasts as a man. Remember when they found the statue first, you know, remember who they were saying that was? Hatshepsut. And then after obvious, you know, analysis, no disrespect to even Semenkare, but you could see that's a young boy featured there. You know, we'll, we'll show him as an older man in a few moments, but the point is, when you see Hatshepsut, Hatshepsut is much more, you know, feminine <laughs> than the, the, the picture of Semenkare. But, but what I'm saying is that every king in, in Kemet fashioned himself with breasts and half man, half woman, that is not something regular. Is them three people here that be keeping up a lot of them signs there. Yeah. All right. Now, and, and those who discover their statues and their statuettes and paintings and glyphs wonder of what level they're on because of this. Well, let me tell you again what level they're on. As I said before, that Tutankhamun is a feathered snake. And this is outstanding. If we look at this on an esoteric level, to us, Tutankhamun will be the greatest of all the pharaohs. Archaeologists refer to him as a minor pharaoh. Why? Because you know, you know, he, he's not seen conquering the Hittites like Seti and, and Ramesses the second and Ramesses the first, and even his grandfather, if it is his grandfather, Amenhotep the third. You know, he is a minor pharaoh man. Somebody was ruling over ruling for him he was just a figurehead that's how they have to thank and let me just come here to say figure. even as it relates to what i was saying there concerning the three individuals the the akhenaten and tutankhamun and semenkari and how they present themselves with that blend that 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 positive negative as it's referred to as in the english language that masculine feminine respectively uh, uh energy vibration it's the same thing with Hatshepsut in fact about a month and a half ago we did a program on the uh, well, I think that was a tiger's nest a program but there's some remnants of it that is on the YouTube Hatshepsut showing because if you understand her writings and 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 her her prophecy it speaks of her being born from an immaculate conception. So she considered herself as one of them human gods too. Aman, Aman Ra was her father. So if you notice, although many people are caught up with different understandings of why she's seen with the beard and she, she's seen herself as a man and people have all kind of queer thing and the first feminist, all kind of foolishness they say about her. But in reality, it is in the same position as the Godman Tutankhamun, seen with these feminine symbols, because he's a man, balance. As the, the Godman Akhenaten, seen with these feminine symbols, because he's balanced. As the Godman Semenkare, which we're going to go into deeper now into this, into this online lecture here, uh, uh, seen with these feminine symbols, again, balance. So it's the same thing with Hatshepsut as, as, a, as a woman seen with these masculine symbols as the pharaoh, as the monarch pharaoh now in that sense, if you want to use them terms, would be equivalent to monarch. I don't agree that she was not king. She was not the king. 
she was the she was a queen and empress can't be a king she's not a man a king is a man you understand a monarch is not necessarily a man you know monarch is the monarch king queen etc but 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 a king is a king so she ain't no king a lot of our a lot of our um scholars and academics like to refer to her as a king i don't know this king thing she's she's a queen a, a queen or an empress whatever the case is and whatever the feminine title would be in in ancient egypt or ancient kemet i ain't buying them thing there you understand this is a different vibes altogether so she also balanced herself herself out and the reason why i'm stressing that point is because in her writings she's she's putting herself in the god realms as being born of immaculate conception as amon ra being her father you understand as i said we've done programs on that not too long ago it's not too hard to find if you just return to the the annals that's why it's good to subscribe to to the tiger's nest yes family give thanks for your presence with us i'm just going to give you a few moments of this and then i will be definitely bidding you a blessing until this evening in the tiger's nest 7 p.m sharp radio anu and remember to join the young ones for youth university at 4 p.m radio anu hey listen you should be living on radio anu eh? whatever the case is for sure remember we're going to be going deeper in this documentary here i know you didn't get it at the beginning i was watching it for a little bit before we signed on here and of course i know for sure you won't be getting all of it but remember visit our website visit the shop the store and you can purchase this right here online this full uh, online lecture it is and of course the other two parts you should get the full collection and any other thing you see um, in the store that's available you know for purchase you should definitely see what it's all about and remember the third of november brand new documentary not an online lecture documentary full-length documentary this will be our fourth full-length documentary the previous one was the night of the black tiger do you have a copy of the night of the black tiger mm -hmm. there are times when we were giving that away for free at least and two at least two specific occasions we just take it just call and we'll give it to you the night of the, that them them is must have documentaries how you can have the night there's nothing like that eh? listen let me tell you i don't want to be saying the 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 the, the wrong thing you know anyway, i can't say the wrong thing we're not perfect but i don't come to say the wrong thing maybe i could say something that needs to be polished up a bit more but i can't say no wrong thing yeah the night of the black tiger goes into the divinity of marcus messiah god prior to that i come back to prior to that is seven the divinity of the honorable king emmanuel charles Edwards. that is on the youtube the fullness prior to that is the master of ceremonies the divinity of emperor haile selassie the first there is the three full-length documentaries video documentaries that the institute the priest isaac's institute of holistic knowledge has produced and now we are coming to the fourth fourth, fourth full-length documentary so these are documentaries you know what i mean vibes and you know what i mean like a movie you're watching and music and action and sound effect you're getting the full works and this one this ain't no joke the honorable prince almasi our chief coordinator definitely stepped up his game and um very soon we'll be bringing out the official trailer and uh, we'll be having a a special um short version you know sneak preview of of the movie a and and we definitely will be having a zoom showing um and and of course the video will be there for purchase as well 
a petty man, the the uh, the lion, the country lion, has prevailed. What a beautiful virus. So, so many things, family, just giving thanks for all the love and all the support and all the strength going through. And as I said, we'll continue to take in some of this. And uh, in a moment or two, we'll be signing off. But I'm here for a while, I know. But when I go, you will know. Go okay. ahead with the feathered snake. It's with the feathered list. snake. If these Egyptian people were so vicious when you present false God to them. Somebody would have definitely done grab to anchor man statues and broke off L them. Listen to this. Listen, li no, listen to Anchorman. No, listen to this logic here, Russ. See Conquering the Hittites like logic. Seti and, and Ramesses the second and Ramesses the first and even his grandfather, if it is his grandfather, Amenhotep the third. You know, he is a minor pharaoh man. Somebody was ruling over ruling for him he was just a figurehead that's how they have to thank a man figurehead with the feathered snake with the feathered snake if these egyptian people were so vicious when you present false god to them somebody would have definitely done grab to anchor man statues and broke off them feathered snake this was a clear cut understanding of who Tutankhamun was, and I will never back off of that. Tutankhamun was the physical manifestation of the Aten, and he was the physical manifestation of Amun. He's one of these God figures that come in the different dispensation, Tutankhamun. He's one of the Melchizedek figures that rise up in the different dis dispensation, one of the Christ figures god in flesh to anchor moon every dispensation it happened in every age it happened in i shall send them saviors thus say it the bible so to anchor man now the feathered snake we went through that not only previous program but we go through that all the time and i'm, I'm still inviting you to get a copy of the night of the black tiger as i said it's not we're not selling it to you you just email us and we give you a copy of the night of the black tiger it gives you more detail of that whole science as it relates uh -huh, to uh -huh, the and i'm glad i'm glad he came in with that day i'm glad i'm right there to come in with that so so yeah so that, that's when we were giving that away but we're not giving that away right now but that's when we were giving the night of the black tiger are we just like say yeah giving it away yeah. Mm -hmm. right, let's and the importance of it. But the feathered snake again is just the symbol of God. You know, this is from ancient time, this is nothing new. So that is why you see the snake with wings through all the cultures. All of them, all of them, something. The people in Beni. Benin, pardon me, the kingdom of the Dahomey. You know what they call them? The people of the snake. The people of the snake. Yeah, Buddha and his posse. You know what I call them people? The Negas people. The snake the people. Okay? The main people there in Chetsunicha and you know what they're dealing with? Quetzalcoatl, the feathered snake. The snake with wings. Hmm? Anyway, you go even Japan and Olympics and whatever is the dragon flying is the is the serpent with the wings so all of this says is very important yeah i don't take the sea turtle easy no man like she just flying through the water there as a reptile so it's a real deep science with the flying serpent it represents this is it this is all what it means it represents god in flesh that's what it means that's what it means. No, no modern day university explanation can take us away from that. All the ancient cultures, Christ said, Christ said, just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall I be lifted up. You follow what I'm saying here? So this is very, very key. The serpent culture, the, the snake with wings, it's science too. It's not make belief. It's science, as I showed already. It's science. It's literally understanding the cycle of the sun. 
of course, we should just take the word of our ancient ancestors, but we can prove it scientifically. You know, they have glyphs and walls that align with specific sunspot cycles and graphs. That is dynamite as far as I see. So you could understand this was a science we had down to the T. And I will say it again. The snake with wings is the presence of God. Look at all of them cometic kings. Look at all them cometic kings. Tutankhamun was, was what, what? The 90th king or 89th king, somewhere around there. Look at all them kings, somewhere around there. Look at all them kings. 76 in the list. Look at all them kings and queens. And this young youth is the one that carries a symbol that means God is here. And just the way he was fashioned to get there. Akhenaten moving city and everything to make sure he's all right to make sure and change it, put away all the other gods, as they say, and highlight one God, the Aten, because what? The living of living image of Aten is coming through. The living image of Aman. Tut Ankh Aman, Tut Ankh Aten. But I thought we were talking about Semenkare. <laughs> so you know, you know the rest of the story? We are talking about Semenkare. <laughs> so Tutankhamun internationally is a god figure you can't run from that in any culture amongst any Buddha amongst any um, Quetzalcoatl amongst any Christ amongst any Moses amongst any Brahma amongst any Shiva amongst any Vishnu Tutankhamun stands head and shoulder even above all of them people they're talking about. The feathered snake. Now he is identified clearly with Asa. He is identified clearly with Osiris. That's the same Asa I'm speaking of. Now this is the mystic link here because Emperor Haile Selassie is Asa. Emperor Haile Selassie is Osiris, the ancient Kemetic deity. Now, of course, I could point you to the master of ceremonies, which is, of course, you know, the DVD documentary that as well is on the YouTube. You can just go and check it there. The master of ceremonies, it is entitled on my channel, Who is Haile Selassie? And then the master of ceremonies. And I think, hands down, I think we made it super clear that Osiris, as he's referred to as, Asa, in his, you know, manifestation, personification then, is Emperor Haile Selassie the first. And of course, if you want it on another level and you want some good reading, you could definitely get a copy of the heavens declare the glory which is our international ebook and that will go into depth that will be a, a wonderful read for you you know you could read it on your tablet whatever the case is and you snuggle up in the evening and go through the pages of the heavens declare the glory this is our more most recent ebook you could definitely get this as well on amazon or you could get this directly from me you know, and, and, and you'll get a good comprehension of exactly how we link Emperor Haile Selassie I with Asar. Again, something we touched upon several times, so we ain't going into the depths of it right now. And I will tell you once more, you can go through the, the YouTube and check it on the Master of Ceremonies. Who is Haile Selassie? Um, 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 and the Priest Isaac, YouTube channel for sure but my point is fam, that Haile Selassie is Osiris because remember the story of Osiris and not because I'm going through it quickly you should still check the book but remember those, the story of Osiris clearly shows you this Ethiopian king who was coronated 72 people came to his banquet very symbolic of the movements of the heavens but in flesh 72 people came to the coronation of Emperor Haile Selassie the first 
which the 72 again is symbolic of the movements of the heavens. And at the same time, remember these same 72 were the same ones that crucified the Asar and put him in the coffin and, and, and cut him up into 14 pieces. Also, depending on the version that you read, cut him up into 16 pieces as it relates to the flooding of the Nile. We highlight all of this in the book so you have a clear understanding of the 16 pieces and the 14 pieces is right here. Because remember, it was Article 16 that they that they that the League of Nations actually actually uh, denied, which would have brought justice to Ethiopia. Haile Selassie highlighted it, Article 16. They cut Osiris into 16 pieces. The same 72 people that came and bowed to him at his coronation is the same colonial masters that were in the League of Nations. And remember, Osiris was resurrected after exactly exactly five years and we know that Haile Selassie was resurrected after exactly exactly five years from the 5th of May 1936 to the 5th of May 1941 so the way that we see it is that Osiris is Haile Selassie in flesh remember Osiris represents the chief guardian and Osiris became the constellation of of, of, of Sahu that they refer to as Orion ruling north and south and we showed you that Haile Selassie the first when he spoke specifically at the United Nations after you know his resurrection that was when he became the constellation of Orion because he gave them the abalik which is the Tekken which is the symbol of Osiris's penis this is deep deep you know you should definitely get the book I'm talking about the heavens declare the glory you know you could get it directly from me once more uh, payments can be used yeah, again with the cash app or the PayPal or you could uh, check the people them in the Amazon and see what they can do for you <laughs> for sure but but you get the point that that tut Ankaman now remember the living image of Aman tut Ankaman the living image of Aten tut Ankaman the living living image you know of Asa that's why you see him here embracing as 